I want to see Urton first. Nah, That's up to you. Uh, we, you guys I do whatever you want. First, right? okay. We're already over here anyway. Yeah. And I think I think here. the guy with the eyes is getting finding that sack getting really heavy. <laughs> He's probably struggling a bit now, despite his muscular frame. Yeah, let's get on with our business. I, I, I mean to see some coins quickly. Yes. <laughs> Calm down, Phil. <laughs> All in good time. Uh, yeah, I walk up to the place then. Uh, Everybody uh, with me as well. I okay. Suppose, yeah, I, you can see uh, looking through a couple if, of the... if it's if it's just a business establishment, Dave, I'm just going to open the door it and is. go in. If it looks yeah. more like a residence, I will knock. But it's just business. I'll open the door and walk in. Sure. You, you look and you know you can see that. Uh, uh, you see Erton. He's standing there, actually, kind of. I, I would say, dressed down for sure, sort of in like uh, like some robes. And it looks like he's got some type of bowl of uh, sort of like a like a porridge or something, and it steams coming out. And you can see that he was working at uh, like a desk. And he uh, okay. kind of looks up, and as you walk into the door, and what does everybody else do? Does everybody else come in behind uh, Pride, or does Pride just go in by himself? Yeah, uh, I'm. How I'm coming tall behind. Is I. This door? I'm uh, trying to make sure he makes it in. It's. Dwarvish for sure, so it's not like a uh, standard, probably seven foot tall door or anything. It's probably about uh, five, this five is an half, investment yeah. in Phil's time. She is definitely going to a company and make sure things go right. Okay. Oh yeah, and no, I'm definitely gonna come sure. along. Uh, I'm, I'm a bit, I'm a bit uncomfortable uh, with everybody overhearing this, but uh, I persevere and I throw up my hands. Ah, it's a long time no. See, bet you didn't think you'd see me uh, this side of Phrasma's uh, realm. Uh, ding dong. No, I I figured uh, you probably would have fled the. Probably the I figured you would have fled because you owe me all that money still. Uh, uh, no, what, what are you speaking of, uh, Please, please. You know, whenever my friends need me, I I show up Johnny on the spot, as it were. Let's forget all the unpleasantness of the past and and think of the future, shall we? Pride, are you indebted to this man? Uh, well, uh, all friendships entail a bit of give and take. Uh, you go your friend. Of course, he's in debt with me. We don't. We don't we <laughs> please don't, don't exacerbate this matter in front of uh, in front of my other friends. They, they will think uh, poorly of. What? What does he owe you money to? Oh my gosh, you don't have I a beard. Congratulate you. Congratulate me from what, Orc? Ah, uh, for over overthrowing that. Bandit King, what was terrorizing the countryside? I, I, yes. I'd like to shake a, your hand. A great quite success you've had here. We'd like to help you rebuild your community. What? Yep, that too. <laughs> what in the hell are you talking about? Bandit Lord? Yes, we, bandit Lord we understand you've overthrown him, but, but we want to help you rebuild. There's no, there's the no Army bandit Trump's. lord. What are you talking about? There hasn't been any fights here since since the ogres 45 years ago. There hasn't been any fights, and we've been here oh, ever since. Uh, turns and it looks very closely at Pride and smiles. Please explain. Right. I'm sure he just doesn't want to talk about it, Grad. I told you not to bring up the matter, but here you are blabbering. You've, you've opened fresh wounds, I'm sure. I've but, been uh, here, my... The, the, the Bandit Lord Business Society, and we don't want to bring up any, any of the recent unpleasantness. Uh, uh, <laughs> we've chanced upon a, a, a shipment of yours. Uh, uh, looks like an ambush uh, met them, and I indicate I here. Uh, I, sh show the fellow what we found. I was the, uh, well, having first, having known Pride as Pride, <laughs> no surprise at, uh, Gerton's responses. <laughs> right, as, I think he's as, playing the rogue. <laughs> as prompted, <laughs> go ahead and take the sack and just single arm lifts it, doesn't shift at all, just holds it out, and then places it on the desk. That is my... That's me silver shipment that went out ten days ago. It, yes. Un, where, where did this come from? But I, did you attack my how wagon? Far, uh, how far out from town was it, Dave? Uh, probably about, about, an about an hour. Probably just uh, maybe a uh, mile, mile and a half out. 
I indeed not, Ayrton. You, you know me. I wouldn't do such a thing. Uh, we, we chanced upon it in route to, to this town here. Uh, the, the wagon was turned aside. Uh, whoever was piloting the thing, uh, their bodies were, were ripped apart uh, and mangled. I don't know if it was wild beasts or what, what got a hold of them, but it was a terrifying scene. Uh, I had my three best couriers on that. Or maybe it was some of the bandit lord's men that what escaped the, the slaughter. Yes, probably, and then maybe probably. you're looking for some more couriers. I, it looks like I'm... Uh, little Lassie, it looks like I'm going to be needing some couriers now. Maybe Pride can my, repay my his debts. Uh, my deepest condolences, good dwarf. Uh, can, can you point us to the, their families so that we may uh, console with them? I I well I don't think they would uh, take that uh, coming from strangers. I mean, this is a a very small dwarvish community, and I I think I should be the one that would uh, bring and be the better of the bad news to the families, wouldn't you think? Seeing that they were under my responsibility. Well, very good. But if they uh, if there's any small service we can do to uh, to aid them in their in their grief. Uh, and the recovery. Service. You said Get they it. found uh, the. You found the wagon, and that 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 is. Man, we will. Nothing. Nothing taken. Was the. You said the the wagon was broken. So if the wagon was well, broken, that attack. About. Would was it a was it a wreck? I mean, I I I don't understand. Uh, there are no bandits in this area. No bandit lord. Uh, right, right. That aside, there was a tree that seemed to be cut in front of the path of this wagon, and the wagon was, was almost destroyed. Everything in it was strewn about. We managed to collect, I don't know if this is all of the silver that was in the wagon, but we managed to collect what, what we could find, and uh, we piled everything up and burnt, burnt the corpses of your, your couriers. I mean, they, they were mangled beyond uh, recognition. Uh, I would hate to even bring them and try and show them to their families in, mm. in that state. Uh, I'm sure you can understand that. I, I, uh, so he goes over to a large leather-bound, uh, sort of like a big ledger book, re record book. You know, he slaps it down, some dust kind of <laughs> you know, pops up, and he's flipping through the pages and licking his fingers, and you know, he goes, ah! I ten days ago, there's a uh, twenty-seven chunks of of silver ore on there, and uh, how many do we have here? And he starts counting. Oh, one, uh, two, three. Hmm. Because it looks like it's all here. So, uh, what what in the world happened? I mean, it was. Uh, it doesn't seem like it was a uh, any kind of robbery or banditry. I, I, like I said, it looked like wild animals. I, maybe some of my companions here have a uh, You uh, said uh, uh, ten days ago? I ten days ago. This is when the, uh, the couriers were sent out. Does no one else travel that road? Very, n not very frequently. I mean, we are sort of out of the way. We're just a small community. We, we mine ore, send the ore out. Sometimes we polish it here, but uh, there's such a, a demand for the ore, and we've got plenty still in the vein inside of the mines, and uh, we just sent it out, send it out unprocessed. Well, I suspect it was a bandit lord, probably, probably chopped the tree down and, and, and arranged for the accident. And it was probably in what I had those people what was not quite not dead enough, but was nearly dead, what was eating your dwarfs. If it was ten days ago, when, when was the bandit lord finally defeated? <laughs> you guys keep speaking of this bandit lord. There is no bandit lord. I don't know why this yes, bandit lord. Yes, the bandit lord has been taken care of. Uh, we understand the bandit lord's up. dead. Who told you about what? the bandit lord? Who who said anything about a bandit lord? Was that Pride? <laughs> yeah, Pride. I, I he told us all to about it. Unbelievable. About Pride has always been a weaver of tales. That's uh, one <laughs> one way that he has gotten into my debt. <laughs> you embarrass me, Ed. Let's not talk about the late, the recent unpleasantness anymore. Friends, right. let's, let's just drop the whole subject of the bandit lord. He has been dealt with, and the community right. wants to move on. I'm holding right. my nunchucks. You've been lying to me. 
He's just shaking his head. Can we just enjoy our vacation? <laughs> it, it, it is good to see you, though, Brian. Now it's time for you it's to start indeed, working it's off that indeed, debt. It's, it's, I have missed you. I have longed to see that beautiful, hairy Speaking. face of yours. Speaking of that debt, then, mm, I... about where does this shipment, bringing it back to you, ensuring that it isn't lost, get him on that? I, I think it's a, a a sign of good faith uh, for him to even show his face around here for the amount of money that that he owes uh, <laughs> that he owes Crux. But more importantly, because what about how much goodwill does he get the rest of us? What does not owe you money? Oh, he <laughs> no, he still definitely owes me quite a few favors. Oh, go ahead and tell him, Pride. What? Uh, tell him why you owe me so much money. Don't hold back! Don't, don't hold back, Pride. You are the you are the weaver of tales. I dirty laundry in in front of these people. I mean, uh, me and you have speculated on the rise and fall of the the metal markets. Uh, you know, you win some, you lose some. Uh, nah, you've taken your share of 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 hits on uh, mad speculation, as have I. Uh, these things happen. I will bounce back better than ever, and I assure you. One of these days, I shall supplant you, your place as the metal baron around here. <laughs> of course, I'm the, I'm the only person that's mining the ore, you idiot. Of course, right, I'm the baron. I will get, I will get my ore elsewhere. <laughs> and maybe I have a couple of leads on, on some gold ore that you know nothing about. Mm. The store is on mine with blackjack and pokers. So tell <laughs> tell me about this uh, f fellow dwarf. What is your name? I am the seeker. The s the seeker. So are you the seeker I, I from the have clan? No the seeker. I know of. Aye. No, I I do not know my clan. I I uh, I am a monk only. Jesus Christ! A I, humble tribe. Uh, Jesus. Uh, uh, in the line of a, a loon, I've never heard of a a dwarf being a uh, one of. Of the, are you going to be up there on the hill with the humans, hugging all of the stones and the trees and uh, playing with the butterflies? Is that what uh, the monks do? No, no. <laughs> no, no, Urton. No, that's that's dru druids. That is the druids. Uh, I seek um, inner peace and enlightenment through self-perfection. Well, if now. you're holding an axe, if you're not holding an axe, you're all the same to me, pal. <laughs> indeed, uh, indeed. I, I take my, my comma out and, and show him that uh, I, I wield a, a similar in implement, not quite an axe. I know where the size of your great battle axes is. It is. Oh, I, yeah, I he's got cleave, several. Cleave, cleave an orc in half. Oh, yeah, he's got several massive double bladed battle axes on the wall behind him. You know, beautiful masterwork quality for, for sure. So he says, uh, is that what you came to slay the bandit lord with? Let's hear the story about the bandit lord. I, please, uh, and he, In, indeed, pride. he, he Let's tells hear everyone the story. to sit down. He has sort of like a, uh, he has a, uh, sort of like a, a table where, where he conducts all his business, you know, and there's all kinds of pieces of parchment and writing utensils on there. And he says, yeah, please, everybody have a seat. And he goes over and, and taps. He's got sort of like his own keg. And, and you know, in his office, and he gets some, uh, he gets uh, quite a few steins off of the, one of his shelves, and starts pouring ale for everyone, and sloshes it down on the table, and he says, "Please, uh, I, I'd love to hear the story about uh, the bandit lord that is seeking vengeance on the small hamlet, uh, the silver <laughs> hamlet of Crescent." <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, That's right. I'd like to hear about this and all. Cause uh, pass me it does a glass seem... of that ale, and I'll be glad to tell you the tales of the heroic uh, fall of the bandit lord. <laughs> oh, he he slides one right over to you. <laughs> he sits uh, down. I and, I uh, take mine and hand it chair, to, to Grant. Well, Urton, uh, you know that you thanks, had sent brother. Me, you had sent me a messenger not long ago saying that. Uh, this bit of, uh, let's, I make little quote signs, this debt of ours, this friendly debt between t two old buddies, no uh, way to work it off, uh, and you had several things, uh, you needed some strong persons, and uh, I knew these chaps here, they're all good sort, uh, good in a fight, as it were, you know. 
And we, I tell you the truth, we, we've been kind of stuffy in that town of ours that we've been uh, living in, so I, I felt like we needed a bit of an excursion and all, so I remembered your offer, and I wanted to cajole them into coming down here, so I may have stretched the truth a bit, uh, you know, elaborated upon uh, the matters that were going on down here. I intimated that there may or may not have been a bandit lord terrorizing the citizenry of, of this town, uh, just to try and spark their, their adventuring spirits. Uh, and, uh, of course, it, it worked a bit too well. They were all rather rambunctiously accepting this offer to go down here and fight off the bandit lord. And, and somewhat at a loss uh, when they entered the town after telling them not to speak of this matter anymore. They, they in, insist on asking every person they see about the bandit lord. But you, you can understand it, uh, where I'm coming from. There is no bandit lord, friends. All right, that, That's the, the long and short of it. The bandit so you lord lied to exist. us. I didn't lie. I, you I, lied. I, I, I felt like you were going to sit there playing your damn bells in that inn for the rest of your life and, and not see the greater world. Uh, and I know my friend Erton and is down here needing help, but I, I figured I'd have to either pull you down here kicking and screaming or entice you. Uh, and I figured enticing was the better way to go about it. You could have just told me. <laughs> yeah, you could have just about said. It. You've known him for many weeks, months, if you knew that you were in need of help, did you not think that we would not help? I, I, I didn't really know, friends. Uh, but, uh, now Are we friends? All right, everyone just stop. <laughs> everyone just stop. It was my idea. Oh, there we go. <clears throat> so you lied to us that, all. that made me uh, tell you the lies. There you go. Fail. You're picking one from the team. Thank you. I told him that this would be the best option. You two blokes are just, oh, you, you anger me, you disappoint me. Dwarf but Grant, me another ale. Take he was, a swallow, a, he take was a against the idea, ale. but I convinced him this would be the best way. The yeah. air so, down here is going to do now us that a world we're here, good. Let us start making some money quickly, Pride. Okay. Oh, is, you know, he is actually leaning back in his chair with his with his uh you know his socks up there he's got a couple holes in the bottom of his of his sockings and he says ah, well that's that's good that you're here and I'm and I'm glad pride that you did bring some bring some friends uh, even though you did lie to him and I would bust your ass as soon as I got you out of here if I was one of them especially ah, especially on. the yeah, half orc he's to talking like that uh, no no it's just a friend a friendly little fear but a white lie well, well, uh, you know, if you're going to be risking your life with your fellow companions, you may want to tell them the truth once in a while. But that is just part of my dwarvish heritage that's right coming friends. out. But anyways, uh, <laughs> I'm not trying to play mommy and daddy to the, you know, to pride here. Anyway, I do have a a problem, as you guys know, a little, a bit, a little bit of history about this place. Crescen was uh, founded a couple hundred years ago or so by some human travelers passing by. They they fell in love with this knoll and the, the stones on top of the hill. They started worshipping them. And, uh, you know, he goes into saying, you know, the, the, the humans started to build their settlement, started to, you know, last several generations. The village gets a little bit larger. And then... Uh, there was, he goes into speaking how his dwarves came, not him. He was, he was just a, he says, I was just a wee young lad when, when my, my mother and my father come through here with, a, with our clan of, clan of dwarves and uh, seeking some good mining areas. And, and uh, we stumbled upon this village of, of Crescent in the middle of nowhere. And uh, uh, to our dismay, the, they were being attacked at the time. They're foul ogres. And being the warriors, you know, proud right, right, warriors. Right. Hey, the proud warriors that the dwarves are. We helped the humans, even though we uh, we had not known them from Adam. We still helped them. Well, as we were staying, and, uh, you know, we, we did take care of the... This was 40 years ago, and I remember my, my father slew many of the ogres himself. 
with with this axe that you see that's hanging up on the wall behind me. And then he goes into telling you, you know, how the after everything had settled and you know the the humans actually asked the dwarves if they would like to become part of their community. Well, as you know, uh, you know, Erton goes into saying how you know the dwarves and you know the humans really never really mingled with one another in their societies. So they agreed to stay because his father found a pretty large silver vein in one of the natural caves. So the dwarves did decide to stay. But it was, an all, it was on the agreeance of the humans stay with the humans and the dwarves stay with the dwarves. You know, there's no no uh, intermingling, whatnot. It's it's a very, you know, they trade with one another. They get supplies from one another. It's very business-like and professional from from how he explains it. It's like a G- it. Jim Croce meets the, the fucking... Uh, <clears throat> yeah, fan- pretty much. Fantasy realm, I guess. Gotcha. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, and, you know, they, they basically stay out of each other's hair. But if things would happen, ogres or, or orcs, then they would take care of it and then life would carry on after that so but they do have a uh, you know uh, commitment to to each other to, to make sure that that happens well then he goes into Erton goes into saying oh, a couple of weeks ago I think some started strange things started happening uh, and that's when I, I sent the I sent the message out uh, message out to you actually it's been more than that it's probably been about three weeks now well, you see, my friends, they worship their god up on the hill. We respect that. You know, we, we, we worship our own gods. Well, they claim that they have saw some short dwarf figures sneaking around at night, basically defacing all of their stones. You know, knocking them over, breaking them. Huh. They just They just think that we're out to quarry those rocks as well and try to take the minerals out of them, which well, I've already looked. There are no minerals in those rocks. And he kind of chuckles a little <laughs> bit. Yeah. And he says, uh, if there was anything of value in those stones, it had been long gone, right? <laughs> it had been gone 50 years ago to when we came to Chris, and my father would have taken exactly. care of it back then. But he says, I'm positive that none of the dwarves have defaced any of the stones from the from the humans, they just will not take my word for it. And now, you know, I've defaced how, as in, like I was saying, breaking the rocks, knocking them over, tipping them, rolling them down the hills, basically desecrating their area of worship. Curly Flair, thank you for the. That follow. is strange, indeed. Aye, it is, because they blame it on us. They won't flat out tell us, but word of mouth, the humans, the you know the 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 talk that comes around the towns and through trade and whatnot, they think that we did. We did not do that. I'm confident that none of my fellow dwarves have done that. Uh, you know, and that's why I've Would I've, I've the shut humans. the mine down. I don't want any anything happening to the. I don't want the humans coming into my coming into my minds, to my father's minds, and trying to sabotage or plant any kind of evidence, because that's what humans well, that's do. that's not good, Ed. No, yeah, because that, I'm losing money now. There. Uh, aye, it's it is. I'm losing money. The but last time I sent a like... ore out was ten days ago, and now it's in my possession again. So there, I All have right. no that's... income. I suppose you'd like somebody to go... Uh... A third party such as us to go and uh, investigate this matter. And all yes, this. it sounds a simple task. We can take care of it handily for you. Mm-hmm. Well, what would would the, would the humans be ambushing your convoys? What is leaving here, and and then be eating the dead dwarfs? I, I tell that. I look, I look at Grot with like this fucking look of uh, eating the like, dead dwarfs. What, what are you there? talking about? <laughs> Well, well, well. We found we found your wagon, and then there was these humans Aye. what did not look very well, and they was eating the dwarfs. Uh, oh, oh my gosh! 
You mean to tell me that you came up and they were eating the dwarfs? As in the undead? Well, the, the flesh-eating undead? Un unbelievable. I don't know. They weren't very well. They weren't human. Yeah, they were not. They, look, uh, they looked human. They were some sort, ish. Of, some sort of animal of some sort. Everything looks human-ish. They were not human. I don't know what they were. We disposed of them to the best of our ability, and, and, and like I say, we burned the corpses and, and brought your ore back to you. Yes. I, I will I look, alert the family. I stare daggers at Grat. I'm like, Grat, uh, my eyes are like, why are you talking about this? Well, I could bring up the, 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 the issue of the bandit lord, but uh, you seem to be somewhat lord. reticent on that subject. <laughs> the, ba the bandit lord has been dethroned, Grat. Let's speak no more. That is, that there is was no history. bandit ancient lord. History, Grat. Silver tongue. <laughs> Anyways, so, uh, Grat, Seeker, do you agree that to prove the dwarf's innocence is a good cause? It is a noble cause. What is we is standing them up for? Standing up for the dwarfs and the humans. We must help them. Ah, uh, you are, yeah, yeah. You are definitely not a full-blooded orc, my friend, because that would, those words would never come out of a, of an orc's mouth. As a monk of the bell, it is my duty to prove that orcs is not all bad people. A monk of the bells. What is what is a monk of the bells, my friend? Are you one of those? Define bad. I, I begin to uh, thrust my groin at him um, <laughs> quickly. Hey, put that thing away. There is a there is a ding dong <laughs> dong dong sound. Please don't do I'm... that inside. <laughs> oh my Look, god! Look, mate, I'm terribly sorry, but I have to do this. He asked. And it is the holy bell, and the holy bell has to be heard by the by them. What is seeking enlightenment? Oh, you two go outside and do this. I I I get it. I get it now. Uh, I I I have not seen anything <laughs> like that since uh, I, the, uh, I since I would you like back to see in Groton and bell? <laughs> no, I would not. I I take your word for it. I. <laughs> So let's talk money. Talk money as in for what? And who are you? To to solve your problems. Well, I would like to get to my I would like to get to my mind back open again, hi. I would like to get to my couriers. Now I need to hire new couriers. I need to find couriers. So I need to young dwarf. Aye. This man, this man will is is a, would be would be a great person. What would be able to steer your wagon properly without crashing into the trees? Well, I have no, I have no silver to ship. You know, I've, I, I have this. We just brought this back I, I, I'm gonna have to keep this and polish it myself now. i have seen that uh, the mine's been closed down for nearly a week and. Now they've got to me silver shipment back. Uh, I'm gonna have to, to basically smith these myself and mold them and put them into to bar form myself, my friend. Unbelievable. But I'll well, tell you if what. If we get your mind operating again, would you not be in a better position to pay those who fixed it for you? I I would be. I could uh, I could pay you in in silver. I really don't have any gold on me at the moment, but I could pay in silver. Or, if you're going to be in Crescent for a while, then uh, once I have a few batches out, maybe I could uh, take care of my debt to you that way. Now, as to f old Pride, my good old friend Pride. Alright, don't worry. I will, I will, I'm going to do this just out of friendship towards you, uh, and I don't need any payment, but my friends here do, do need the money. I, well, I, I know that you don't uh, need any payment, but seeing that you, you suckered your <laughs> poor friends to coming to this, this uh, hamlet of <laughs> what, dwarves what, what and humans. What is this posh term you're using? Well, Enticing. you told them that there was a Enticing. bandit Enticing. lord, did you did not, Pride? If I'm not mistaken, Grat, did he not talk and speak of a bandit lord? He did. He told us there was this bandit lord what was terrorizing the village and we had to come and help the poor villagers. 
But it turns out he was lying. Can you believe it? Bassett was lying, was he? I. I'll tell he you was. what. He was. Prime. He's a he's a, a silver-tongued devil. 